is the Gord Ranger OP. Can it compete with other items, even after the nerf? Welcome everyone, I am the clone and this is a new series where I'm playing with a certain build for a few weeks and then I analyze the build and come up with a conclusion on whether or not it has a place in the meta and if it's good or even OP in some cases. As a matter of fact, I've already talked about the two best builds, those being the Kraken Slayer and the Gelfos build. The two builds are rather similar, yet they serve completely different purposes, for the Kraken Slayer is a perfect all-rounder for dealing with anything you throw at it and the Gelfos being the best at assassinating enemy carries and winning the game that way. But for today, I have something completely different, a build that cannot do either of those things. And what I mean by that is, the Gore Drinker is a pretty mediocre item. I honestly don't even know why I'm making a video on it, but I do know one thing. This build is astonishing. It's astonishing because the Gore Drinker build is probably the dumbest build that I've ever played with. And again, it's not because of the Gore Drinker. At least not because of the Gore Drinker itself. It's because of the interaction between the Gore Drinker and the Ravenous Hydra. This interaction alone doesn't just make the build viable, it makes it one of the most ridiculous builds that I've ever seen. The Ravenous Hydra's passive does the same thing as before, where after attacking you deal 60-12% to damage in a cone around you, depending on the distance. Except this passive applies to abilities now as well, including the Gore Drinker's active. On top of that, the item gives Omnivamp instead of Lifesteal, meaning that you'll heal for all types of damage that you do. But before we get into the build, let's talk about the Gore Drinker itself. Also, if you guys like my content and want to see more, don't forget to drop a like and to subscribe. Especially as it takes me a really long time to make high-ish quality videos like this one. Back to the Gore Drinker, just like with a Gale Force, you're building a similar epic item at first. To be more precise, the Iron Spike. It gives you the same amount of AD as a Noon Quiver, minus the attack speed, yet it has a lower cost, and if you're struggling with clearing the raptors and crags, after the box finally finds peace besides Rambi, you can use the whip to reapply the jungle's item burn to the chickens for that extra crisp. You can also use the item to one-shot low HP enemies, the fast combo featuring a backstab, smite, the iron spike and then E. And the other epic items that build into the Gore Drinker are quite all round decent, I mean they are more defensive focused items, as both the Phage and Kindle Gem provide with some HP. Now once you have fully completed the item, it's where the fun starts. The Gore Drinker has surprisingly decent stats, besides the two passives and one active. The 20 ability haste which is empowered by 5 with each legendary item you get, can add up to a nice amount that when combined with other ability haste items can result in a 50% total CDR. And the 45 AD is also decent, considering that most AD items give between 40 and 65 AD nowadays. And this is a bruiser item, not meant for an assassin or marksman. On top of that, the 400 HP is quite a lot, and you also get a passive that grants you up to 15% bonus AD depending on your missing health. And now, we finally get to the item's passive, the bread and butter of the build. Trusting Slash. You do 100% AD damage to enemies in a 400 unit radius, but it's not a damage, it's the healing. You heal for 25% AD plus 8% of your missing HP for each enemy, meaning that you can heal for 5 times that amount if you hit the entire enemy team with that active. And you can imagine, because you'll build AD, that active will get you back to full HP. And that's especially because of the Ravenous Hydra, which you can imagine will always be your second item. I mean, theoretically speaking, the boots will always be your second item. Item, those being the Berserker's Greaves. I mean, I think you can also make the plated steel caps or the Mercury trades work if the enemy team is really strong and you want the extra tankiness, or if you're a pussy. One of the two, I guess. Anyways, going back to the Ravenous Hydra, which will always be your second item, third third item if we take the boots into account. Fuck. And now I just forgot what I wanted to say, which is kind of funny considering that I'm reading everything of a script. Huh. Anyways, the moment we've all been waiting for. Here's the build. I like to call it, I have really strong sustain while being tanky, so I can both one-shot squishies and also resist the oppressing initiative of tanks to take over the world. I'm just kidding, all champions have a place in my heart, except for Teemo, especially tank Teemo. Pfft, fuck tank Teemo. Anyways, that's the build. You have the Ravenous Hydra for the Gore Drinker interaction, which, together with the Blade of Drawing King, result in really nice sustain. And you also have other items like the Strax Gauge for damage while having HP and the Death Dance for tankiness and again, even more damage. And as your third item, the Ravenous Hydra is not just about the interaction, the item is really good on its own as well, as it provides with insane utility. And what I mean by that is, with it you can farm the jungle as fast as a Malphite one shot at this MF, or you can also split push silence as fast as the season 2 AP mastery just Penta killed with 2 Qs, and ultimately when you're low HP you can just get back to full as fast as I am in this clip on the Cracks camp. You thought I was going to show another exaggerated clip for the comparison, didn't you? Anyways, moving on, the reason why you want to go for the Blade of the 
Gathering King is your fourth item is, since you already have a decent amount of tankiness from the Gore Drinker so you won't get one-shotted, you also want to be able to deal with more tanky champions and just have more sustain in general. And the Blade of the Rain King is not only good against tanks, as because of its new passive which on your third attack gives you bonus AP damage, is resulting in item being good against squishy champions as well. Now for your 5th item, you have a choice between the Strax Gauge and the Black Lever, and both these items synergize really well, simply because of their stats. The Strax Gauge is really good for when you have to engage, when combined with a shield can make you last in a fight for just a few more moments in order to get away after you assassinated the enemy carry, while it also provides you with really nice damage. Or you can go for the Black Lever. The Black Lever is best against more tanky enemy team comp, or for when one or more than two enemies decided to stack some armor. And unlike the Strax Gauge, the Black Lever feels more consistent, the Strax Gauge only truly feels at its max potential when you go in and get that shield, where the Black Lever has more diverse stats. You get 25 ability haste, decent AD and some HP, and on top of that its passives make the item feel viable in most situations. And now for the last item you have the classic choice between the Death Dance and the Move Mamortius. As already mentioned in the Kraken Slayer build video, the Death Dance is for when the enemy team has a strong AD comp and the Move Mamortius is for when the enemy team has a really strong AP comp. Either way both items are pretty good and synergize really well with the more tanky nature of the build. And yeah, that, that's the build guys. For once, I still use Hell of Blades so I can dominate the early game and try to get a lead with the Iron Whip. And it's a pretty decent item as it's similar to the new Quiver. The only difference is that I take Legendal Accuracy instead of Legend Bloodline as I usually would. The reason why I do so is because the build already has insane lifesteal and sustain on its own. Therefore, by taking attacks with Bruins compensates for the lack of attacks within the build itself. And I also like taking Last Stand over Cup Decrease because when you're low HP and use the Gore Drinker to deal as much damage as you can in order to heal. Like this you'll have all around your stats while being tanky and being able to one shot carries when need be. To conclude, if you have to deal with tanks, the Kraken Slayer will always be a better option, or when you have to one shot carries and solo the game, the Gelforce is still better. With this build, it can be so surprising. It performs best against a team where you won't get melted down, so you can make use of the build's sustain and Gore Drinkers active, and where you can bully squishies with your tankiness. The build is perfect if you're feeling lazy to focus on the game and just want to have an easy time. The build is so basic and simple, it takes almost no skill to play with really. You can just jump in, ult and attack until you're low HP, and then just use the Gore Drinker and you're back to full HP. Better yet, if you have the Strax Gauge, now you also gain a giant shield on top of it. Even if you miss positioned or just wanted to play more aggressively, these items give you the resistance you need to carry and survive through a teamfight. Definitely give this build a try guys. And do let me know how it went. Were you pleased with the performance of the build and the Gore Drinker plus Revenous Hydra interaction? What are your thoughts on Bruiser Shaco at the moment? Also, if you guys are watching this video as it's released, I'm live right now at both twitch.tv forward slash clone and here on YouTube, playing with a new Stridebreaker build, which, as you might have guessed, will also be the next item that I'll be making a video on. So come along and watch me go on my adventure to try to find the best build combination for the Stridebreaker. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe, as it really does help me a lot. Thanks a lot for all the support so far, and as always, until next time, guys, stay safe. Woo! Fun fact at the end, at the beginning of the game, if you start with a blue buff and are concerned about the enemy team invading your jungle, you can place a box inside the pixel brush, while you yourself are inside this brush. Like this, if the enemy team invades, they won't be able to see you placing the box.